With England and Hungary recently battling it out to a one-all draw in London, the only thing I could think about whilst I watched Declan Rice chase shadows for 90 minutes was a game played between these two sides long ago that was deemed the match of the century. The match was played in November 1953 at England's home ground Wembley, and when looking at the 6-3 scoreline in favour of Hungary, I'm sure it was a very entertaining watch. However, when reading further into the reports of the game and having watched it myself, which you can also do, and I will leave a link down in the description, it was a much more one-sided affair, as Hungary could have scored many more, shown by the 35-5 shot count in Hungary's favour. So whilst it was certainly a high-scoring, entertaining affair, why was such a one-sided game deemed the match of the century? Well, like always, we need to look into the specific context that was surrounding this match. Let's start with the Hungarian side. Hungary were the current Olympic champions and on a 24 game unbeaten run that had lasted for almost three years. They were physically and technically better than other teams and tactically far beyond everyone else at that time. And they were led by their iconic goal scorer, Ferenc Puskas. This team is often considered the very beginnings of total football, playing fluid attacking football that would be made famous by the Dutch later on. In all honesty, this Hungarian team of the early 1950s has a genuine claim to being the best international side of all time. They didn't just win games, they destroyed their opponents. In the 1954 World Cup, they scored 27 goals in just 5 games for an average of 5.4 goals a game. And if they hadn't lost in the 1954 World Cup final to a team that they beat 8-3 earlier on in the same competition, it's very likely that they would be considered the best by many. So we know this was a very strong Hungarian side, but what of England? And perhaps the real reason that this game was somewhat infamous is that England had never lost a home game to a team from continental Europe. Of course, they had played other nations from the United Kingdom a lot, beginning in 1872, and so they had lost to those teams. They had also lost to the Republic of Ireland in 1949. But there was still a sense of invincibility any time a team outside the British Isles came to play at Wembley. And so when a smaller nation was coming to England at Wembley to play a game, despite being the number one ranked team in the world, the expectation was a massacre, an easy 4-0 for England. One of the England players, Billy Wright, said after the game, When we walked out at Wembley that afternoon, I looked down and noticed that the Hungarians had these strange lightweight boots, cut away like slippers under the ankle bone. I turned to Stan Mortensen and said, We should be alright here, Stan. They haven't got the proper kit. Little did they know at the time, England were tactically and technically far behind, and there was no greater team to exploit this than the Hungarians. Moving on to the game itself, it might seem odd now, but really at the time, Football only had one formation most teams would use. It's called the WM. It was a 3-2-2-3 formation, and players would have a number associated with the position that they played. Well, England were totally stumped when number 9 Nando Hidekuti would drop into midfield and the number 10 and 8 Pushkash and Koshish were staying up front as these didn't line up with the traditional positions. This meant the England players didn't know who was supposed to mark who, and considering at the time pretty much every team used a man-to-man -man marking system where players would follow their equivalent player around the pitch, that caused some great difficulty. In fact, these problems were evident from the start as just 45 seconds into the game, Hidiguti hit a stunning strike to give Hungary the lead. The rest of the game was much the same, with Hungary completely dominating in most aspects and just constantly attacking. But don't just take it from me, because a 20-year-old future England manager, Sir Bobby Robson, was at the game, and he describes it like this. That one game alone, in its entirety, changed our thinking. We thought we would demolish this team. It's England and Wendy. We are the masters. They are the pupils. They won't get the ball for a start. We'll be far too strong for them. And they won't see daylight. And uh, they'll be glad when the game is over. It was absolutely the other way. This game completely stunned everyone who was there and shook English football to its core. Everything a nation had told themselves about the sport that they had invented was now clearly untrue, and England would have to start again. And just in case there was any doubts that this happened to be just a one-off freak result, well, England would travel back to Hungary the following year and play another match against them, and they would get demolished again, this time losing 7-1 which to this day is England's largest defeat in any game. 
After these games, English football began to adopt the training methods and styles used by Hungary and other continental European teams, something that would have been unthinkable just a couple years beforehand. Many of the top British coaches of the time, such as Matt Busby, Don Revy and Bill Nicholson, all saw the importance of learning and adopting the Hungarian style and used that knowledge to great effect. This game is the game of the century, not just because it was a shocking football moment and a big upset perhaps, but because it completely changed the footballing culture of an entire nation in just 90 minutes. And that is just a little bit of football history. Thanks for watching.